Hello, everybody. Happy hump day. Another crossword, crossroad accomplished. Another half week has come and gone. Well, actually, it hasn't gone, right? It's just started. Oof. <clears throat> I hope everyone is wellish, as can be expected. Hi, Kathy, Whitney, good morning to you also. Good to see you. Hope things are well out on the West Coast. I'm trying not to make too much of a mess. Hello, Marguerite from beautiful British Columbia. Oh, Canada. Oh, Canada. Yes. My son is a huge Blue Jays fan. And a Canadian football fan. He even named his son. His name has the initials of the CFL. His name is Callum Finn Law, standing for the CFL. I know. Oh, okay. I'm so glad you came in and could say, hey, and you have a routine appointment. That's good. Nothing urgent. Just need to be, you know, do the routine. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I had my annual. I guess physical, if you want to call it that. It really wasn't much of a physical, but but they ask you, uh, you know, uh, questions like how you're feeling. And I was giving the uh, the RN a hard time, I and mean, I shouldn't have. I said, "Oh, I'm so depressed." And she looked at me, "Really?" And I said, "No, I'm just kidding. I shouldn't have done that." But and then they ask you, they list three or four objects. And then you have to repeat them. Happy hug day to you too, Kimberly. And then they ask you about 10 minutes later, they'll ask you what those three items were. And they expect you to remember that. And then, oh, then they give you a clock and you have to, uh, they'll say, well, write down 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock. So you have to write, you know, the right time on the, piece of, you know, the blank piece of paper that had, I think, I think they actually tell you to, uh, to draw a clock. Mookie. Oh, for the ball player? Oh, didn't Mookie play for the Mets? Maybe he ended up at the Blue Jays. Bag O blood was drawn off related to his vampire's diseases. The iron overload. Oh, wow. Usually it's the other way around. Iron deficiency. Yeah, I remember I remember the baseball player, Mookie. I thought he played for the Mets, but maybe he would, maybe he ended up with the Blue Jays. I've been to the, uh, you know, the Toronto baseball stadium once, and what a an agricultural feat of wonder. They have a really neat little film before you get a tour of the ballpark. And they actually tell you what inspired the architect to design the retractable roof. And he said he was looking at a lobster tail. I know, weird. And he said he noticed like the, the plates, like in the you know in the lobster tail that m enables it to move and from that he got the idea to create the retractable dome and with the plates hi pam how are you i'm glad you're here for hubba 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 day it's amazing how quickly wednesdays roll around i was talking about tuesdays because my son's, my oldest son's birthday was Tuesday. And like, what do you do? I mean, Tuesday is just 
what can you say? I mean, Monday, you know, you can say, oh, you have to go back to work. It's after a you know, weekend. But Tuesday, it's just there. You know, it serves no purpose at all. And at least Wednesday's hub day, right? At least put you in the middle. And Thursday, as we used to affectionately call it, is Friday Eve. And then you got the weekend, you know, and Friday is, you know, TGIF. But Tuesday, it's just there. I often think about things like that. So I thought I would show you. I finished all the background pages on my Roaring Twenties journal. And... Um, I figured I would just do a quick flip through and show you how that ended up looking. And now, of course, I have to go back and fill in all the ephemeras. And I want to put, you know, pockets and journey, journal cards. And I want to uh, spruce up the edge of the pages, a la Natasha from Treasure Books. She's got a whole video where she's got 30 different page edges they're just mind-boggling because if you put them all in then the book would be like you know it would be alligatored out about that big but she just got such great ideas in this video that video that particular video where she does the page it she starts it in her car and uh i love her too hi natasha she starts the video in the car so you're actually kind of seeing her and she's talking she says well i'm just sitting here waiting for the kids to get out of school and then the kids clamor in the car and then she ends up in her studio and then she starts her whole thing about the uh the edges so i'm going to be probably doing some of those the only problem with doing a journal in an already bound book is you can't take the pages out and stitch around them. I was trying to bend this book back and to see if whether I could feed it through my sewing machine. Um, and I don't think it's going to be possible. Uh, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to give it a try. So this is obviously I haven't done anything. This is like a blank canvas for something to be put there. And um, so here we go. I think I'm in frame. No, I'm not. Let me move my camera down. How about that? Maybe I can move it out a little bit. That's a little bit better. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. So I took Barbara Clark's suggestion. Oh, I'm sorry. Your blood pressure is high. You're going to test it. Okay, make sure your feet are flat on the ground and take a couple of deep breaths before you take it because I have to take mine on a regular basis. So I took Barbara Clark's uh, suggestion and I had a white charcoal pencil and I just outlined her mask and the rest of her with the white charcoal pencil because the white charcoal pencil is not as, I guess, in your face as like a white Posca pen would be. Well, you know, she shouldn't lie down. I mean, she needs to sit up to take her blood pressure. Then she could lie down. Yeah. Yeah. My blood pressure has a tendency to be really high. Now, all of a sudden, it's ridiculously low. Yes, didn't it? Yeah. And I happened to buy like a, a, a little set of white charcoal pencils. And I think this was it. It came with... Yeah, this was the set. And a white, uh, two browns and two blacks. Hard, soft. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and there's the white. And that kind of gives it the perfect, subtle effect. So I was happy for that suggestion. You guys always have such great suggestions. So. Okay. So... Whoops, this is going to be a, I'm thinking of these. That was one of her ideas is you punch out shapes and um, use those as tabs. So I don't have too many punches and I have fewer like shape punches. But I thought, you know, maybe the butterflies attached like so. 
could possibly be. I would use colored paper and maybe just put one staple right there and that would make a neat tab. So I'm thinking of, that's why they're in here. And this is another one of those neat uh, pictures I have from the fabric that I got from Rosemary Morris. And that's uh, half of one of my jelly plate prints. I ordered, oh, I'm so excited. I ordered myself a brand new jelly plate. And I ordered two of the tins that you can store the jelly plates in. And it was interesting. I went on Amazon, right? And one was $26. One was $26. And then there was a little button and to click for details. So I clicked on the details and the same damn tin box came up for $16. It was $2 cheaper, no, $10 cheaper. So I bought two of those anyway. So, so these are the pages. And here's one of my, I've made like a little journal spot already, which was going to go over here. Here's one of my, my ladies that I had, I had done a couple of um, streams ago. And that's when I bought the, uh, the gold thread that I actually was successfully able to put in my sewing machine. So that's one of my, my dolls. Let's see, so... And this is real paper from 1924. So I was messing around with some pages here. Oh, this is another. I had these. Uh, this was one of the ephemeras that I got from one of the uh, online kits. And I painted them. Well, they stuck together here. What the heck? Okay. So... And I did gold around them with my fingers. So I'm thinking these are going to make really cute tab ta uh, tags for the, uh, the thingy, right? And that'll, that'll match. And then I thought I would just put a, one staple, like right here. And then this could be like a tuck spot. And I just put three on, on the page here. And I thought those would be neat as a... Oh, thank you, Andrea. Thank you so much. And um, so that's going to be another tab, you know, idea. I'll stick that. Yeah. And this is like, I thought this was perfect because this is the uh, Chrysler building, which was built with the deco, deco art. And this has kind of got the deco, what well, it does, deco art. And I bought a book, a used book of the Roaring Twenties, and I cut out a lot of pictures. So I was just messing around with that page. Okay. Here's another page. That graphic is from Graphic Fairies, and that's Graphic Fairies also. Here's my other lady that I did a while ago. Yeah, I'm going to, I, I want to, yeah, I want to have journal spots because those are fun. And I want them to be obviously journal spots. So here's the other lady I did. And then I just folded this over. And then added the uh, that to it. And then this is an, another piece of material I had. I'd gotten all this material from Rosemary. Uh, there was this. The uh, one, two, four pieces I bought from her. And this is uh, a political cartoon down with inhibitate, inhibit, I can't even say it, inhibitations, liberate the libido, Liberty Bell, she's cracked. And this is a vamping chart, not vaping, but vamping chart. And that's on how to play the piano, I guess. But that came in that Infevima pack. And this came out of that book that I bought, I cut up. And let's see, another page. It's waiting to be, let's see. 
Whoops. And this was the cover of Life magazine. And this is a smaller, another Life magazine, but they had this kind of like style that they were using on the cover of their Life magazines, which I thought were really cool. And I have the etiquette. I have the whole book on everyday etiquette that I'm going to insert in here. All right. Take care, Kathy. Hope thing, everything goes well. A little article about a radio. And uh, here's some style and ladies. And this is that Tim Hulse um, paper that, that's like wallpaper. And I'm going to punch out the butterflies on this and then use that as a tab thing. So that'll go. I mean, I'm going to tab up the sides. And here's just... I don't know whether I'm I'm going to do much to this page. I might have like a flippy floppy out thing so that it won't obstruct the pages. But these pages came out of a Roaring Twenties journal that I bought. And then here are the steps to the Charleston. Um, how you start. And that came out of the ephemera pack. I took a picture of it and blew it up. More of the same. That was in the ephemera. That was in the... Uh, Graphics Fairy, this peacock. So, and that's out of that book that I bought, that I tore up. And there's the Charleston. And on the other side of this is the steps. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, the etiquette was pretty, pretty, uh, you know, and that's it. And then, of course, I will be decorating... The bound, I'm, I'm thinking of maybe a material glued down here. And uh, I wanted to show you what I had, what I did. I found some photographs. All I did is I went on Google and I said black and white photographs of the 1920s, right? And so a whole bunch came up. And if you think I can find them now to show you, hell no. All right. I'm not going to waste any time. I, are they? I just wanted to show you. Okay, here they are. Just wanted to show you a neat little technique if you ever want to try it. So I just copied them. Just, you know, double finger opened up and said copy this image. And then I copied them into Google Drawings. And then I printed them out. And I printed them out on, I bought a ream of beige paper. And it, it's perfect for printing out older stuff because uh, it's or it's not stark white. And uh, so I pin, printed them out on regular beige paper. And then I glued them to cardstock. And look, this is how they came out. And I, I did a little brown thing around them. But they really look like old-timey photographs i mean they are but i you know <laughs> i it's not gonna be me but i thought these were kind of neat uh whoops photographs that i can use and uh, from the 1920s so that's all i did is i googled photos from the 1920s and a whole bunch of them popped up and then i tried to make them kind of look um, now, in that Google Drawings app, I could have actually printed them out in sepia, 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 which I thought that that brownish color was too dark. But I really like this. This has lines in it because my uh, my laser printer is low on toner. So that was perfect for that. So that's where I am at um, for the journal. And I have tons of stuff to, I guess the word is what, audition and put in. This is a piece of uh, paper, a, a thing that I had made that I thought I might use as pages. And I thought this would make a really nice, you know, tab. Because it's all, I, it's, I've got the gold foil on it and everything. So that's going to be one of the, the tabs that's going to go in the book. 
So, and there's my journal page. That was just out of scraps. That's going to be for the, I'm going to punch out the butterflies and my ladies. There'll be another. And of course, I'm going to do, do lace and all that stuff. Squid ink. Mm, did you mention squid ink earlier? So I was watching, I found another watercolor artist. Now you think I can remember her name? Hell no. She does a lot of abstract stuff. Um, throws stuff down and then makes beautiful, you know, doodly, 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 doodly watercoloring, which is right up my alley because I'm not really a drawer. So I did one this morning and I'm not real happy with it, but are we ever happy with our work? But I, I took a, a I took a card out of the, the color cube box and that was the palette for this. And so this is it's kind of busy, but that's what she does. She just she dribbles ink down and then she just uh you know just starts doodling with white and gold and pens and such so i was this is well you know this is kind of addictive because every time you look you see another spot where you can add something oh okay so who was going i don't think anybody's thinking no one wants to do the charleston andrea i'm sorry I'm sorry, no one's up for it. Should I go for a third? And what do you all think? <laughs> well, isn't it Charleston where you... Oh, sepia is made. I didn't know that from Squiddy. I did not know that. That's interesting. So what she also did, that's what I'm going to attempt to do, is she did a Mandela with watercolor. Now, you know how persnickety watercolor can be. So I've already kind of done the Mandela stuff here. And I thought to make it even more interesting, it, I would pick a card out of the color cube box and uh, use that palette. Uh, and I'm going to use my Gambia inks watercolor inks, which are kind of a cross between watercolor and gouache. And uh, so here's, here's the color cube box. This is box two. Yeah, I had no idea either that it was that it was squid ink. And um, each box has 250 in it. So let's just and do anybody want to yell out a number? Uh, this is box two, so a number from 250 to 500. Anybody want to type in a number? 250 to 500. Anybody game? Throw in a number. Your fabric question. Okay, I missed the fabric question. Let me go up. Fabric question. Hi, Janet. Three, three, three. Okay, perfect. Love it. Three, three, three. Oh, can you see the question about fabric adhesion? Oh, da, 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 da. I'm so sorry. No, you could repeat it. Fabric adhesion. Um, referring to, can you just type it in again real quick? I don't see it. Hi, Carol. Welcome. I was going to use probably Fabri-Tac. 
if I use fabric. That was my plan, fabric tack. Um, but I'm not sure. I thought I. Oh. No, that none of. Oh, I see. Question: one, What did you use to adhere the fabric to the pages? No, none of those pages have fab fabric on them. Only the two paper dolls have fabric on them. Uh, but the pages are paper. All those paper. All those pages in the in the journal are all paper that I you know pictures that I printed out. No, no fabric. Hi, Yolan. Yolan's on at two thirty. Uh, I haven't seen Aunt Bex, but she's usually on at 1.15, 1.30 if she's going to be on. Uh, hi, Chris. So I'm going to do card 333, and I'm going to take that palette and try to uh, do it on a Mandela type thing. It'll be rough because you know what the watercolors are like. Let's see, 404. 394, 385, 363, 334. So uh, these are hard to get out. I tell you, I tell you. Ah, I got it, I got it, I got it. Ah. 333. Three, three. I hope it's kind of reasonable. 333. Three, three. Are you ready for the big reveal? Ta da! Ugh. Ugh. Oh, well, I, these are not my colors at all, but we'll make it work. Okay, so these, this is it for 333. And here it is. When you turn them over, they have the different shades and hues. Okay. Let's see whether I can match that up. Okay. Ugh. Three, three, three. I'm going to be using, I told you, my um, Gambia paint, uh, watercolor paints, which I absolutely adore. This is my newest gift to myself. This is the Art Nouveau set. And that's a set of gold and graphites. And this is my the first set I ever bought. <sighs> so let's see if we can find things to match. All right. So we need a burgundy. Hmm. Rose. This looks... Let's see. And these come out, which is nice. <clears throat> I think that's going to work good for the rose tan, the darker version. And this is called mauve, but we're going to use it for this one. I think that'll be that'll work for that one. And crimson, that's a pretty regular color. Let's see. That's, let's see. Maybe one of these reds up here. Uh, let's try this red. If I can get it out. It's getting them out. It's a problem. <clears throat> and this is just has a number on it. <laughs> I don't know. That may be not it. And these just have numbers on them. Do we have a red over here? No, we don't. Let's see. Well. These are really red, red. But I'm going to use this one because it's a darker red. They don't have to be exact. In burgundy, burgundy, burgundy. Uh, let's see. I don't think there's any burgundy in there. Again. Whoops. They're kind of stuck together. I could do a little water. Why don't I do that? That would make sense, wouldn't it? 
Let me just do a No, I need something much darker than that. Okay, let's see. It's hard to tell. Uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, well, that's a, that's purple. Well, maybe we don't have a burgundy. Hmm. Boy, got lots of purples. That's going to be a blue. Well, we'll have to. This looks like a brown. Yeah, it's a brown. Do we need brown? Well, we could use that. Huh. That kind of looks like that, though, doesn't it? Even though they're calling that burgundy. No, we'll use this. What the hell? I got it on my thumb. I can do a thumbprint. There's no burgundy in the art. Huh. I'm sure there's a way of making burgundy, which I wouldn't know how to do. Uh... I know. It does look brown. I may not use it because it is brown. Actually, you know what they're calling this? Venetian red. That's not, that's what it says, Venetian red. That does not look like Venetian red. Anyway. All right. We need clay. I think I'm going to use this one. And this one is yellow, brown, or clay. Okay. Uh, actually, that's kind of close. It's like there. All right, I'll use this one for the clay. And um, Chris, you're saying um, red and a pinch of blue. Red and a pinch of blue. Okay. Let's try that. I have my little porcelain mixing things. So we'll take some red. That's not really red, is it? But that's the red I chose. All right. Well, it'll be my own inventions, right? And a pinch of blue. I think I need more blue. No. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's kind of a light. Yeah. I think my red was wrong. Yeah. I don't see how that's going to turn into burgundy. Well, wait a minute. Is that? I can't tell. The Art Nouveau set at least has... I think I. No, it's a real dark purple. Man, they got a whole lot of purple. Jesus. All right. Well, purples, we're going to use that because I don't want to spend all. I mean, 
and we'll just do the best we can with that with that palette. Just don't tell anybody. Hmm. That's interesting that there's no burgundy in any of this. Or if there is, it's hiding. It's interesting. It is fun to just mess around. And there's exercises where you can just, you know, ooh, that's a pretty blue, isn't it? Ooh, gosh, darn. Ooh, I wonder if I added that to that. Let's see. No. Uh. Oh, look. That's closer. That's close. That's a pretty close. That's getting close to burgundy. Look at that. What do you think? It's kind of. Kind of maybe. They just don't tell on me. I think that's kind of like a burgundy. Ah, a touch of black. Just a touch. Oh, that was too much black. But, see, that's the hat, and then you go back. No, I screwed it up, folks. All right. Let's go back to the red, and then I'm, I'm just going to start. Because I'm going to end up with mud but that's see that looks like burgundy right there kind of all right that's gonna have to do all righty these out of the way let's see no that's okay no, I'm not going to add any more colors. <laughs> oh, no, no more. We're going to go with what we got. And I'm going to start. Just doing the circles. And then, yeah. Let's start with our, our very own burgundy before it dries out. Okay. Actually, you know, it really kind of does look like a burgundy. It does. I kid you not. So I hope everyone is doing well. I see that they've had some, you're back to cold weather in Calgary. I saw it was 38 there this morning. 
That may be like a, a heat wave, right? Well, I guess 38 would be a heat wave in February, but not so much in mid-April, huh? Well, I've told this many times where I used to live in New York. We had snow on Mother's Day one year. And I found that very depressing. It had already been a long winter. And the, the old time, well, it's not really snow. And I said, well, I don't know. It's white and it's falling from the sky. Well, it's not sticking. Okay. So you can see where I'm a little wobbly here, but that's okay because it's watercolor. Actually, that looks like burgundy. Uh, I think it does. I think it's. I think it's a good, uh, a good, good mix. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to leave that, and then we're going to go to. Let's go to this color which is really not the right color, but we're going to use it anyway. I figured it was going to be risky to... The only thing about these palettes is that the colors are supposed to, you know, kind of go together. I mean, that's if you match them accordingly. I'm afraid to use a. Thank you, Andy. I'm afraid to use a bigger brush. I splurged on. fairly good set of brushes this these were recommended by janet young and kathy arbor they're the silver black velvet and i i got a set of three and i only use them for watercolor i've been every once in a while you know if i'm doing acrylic and i grab them i immediately remember to put them on do not use them with acrylic. I mean, I know you could, but I want to just save these for watercolor because they are predominantly watercolor. This is going to be an interesting kind of Mandela because it's not going to be precise. It's going to be sloppy. And when I start to do all of the, you know, the, the, the fancy stuff and the embellishing, then I'll bring in the gold. Okay. I actually can't believe I am painting in front of people. I'm terrified. But I figured, what the hell? It's only a piece of paper. And everybody is so supportive. Why not? Right? All right. We've got a bullseye. Hi, Mariah. Yeah, you have one. Yeah. I've got, let's see. Nope, that's not. I got a big one. And this one. And I think I have one smaller one. It was a set of three that I got. And uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty special. They're beautiful brushes for sure. I don't know where it is. 
Oh, here it is. Nope, that's not it. It doesn't matter. Maybe I only got two. Maybe there was only two in the set. But, yeah. And then I have a big mop brush. A Princeton. I think this is a Princeton. No, well, yeah, this is a Princeton Neptune. This is the brush that Robin McClendon uses a lot. And these these big floppy brushes really can lay down a lot of a lot of stuff. Oh, here's the other. Here it is right there. So it was a four eight in that big one. That was that came in the set. And honestly, I'd never spent that amount of money on brushes in my life. Now these colors are kind of Blah, but we're going to go with them. Um, Cause that was our, that was the challenge. So I think I'm going to go right up against this. And if it bleeds a little bit, that's kind of, that's good. Because the Mandela queen is Barb Owen. Man, can she throw down some Mandelas. She had a Mandela course several years ago that I took. I think Barbara Clark took and Becky took. And of course other people, but those are the people that I know that took it. And we did a lot of Mandelas. And the neat, I, you know, and it is meditative, meditative, yeah. I and mean, the neat thing about it for me is, you know, you 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 pick a, a a shape, right? Whatever you're gonna do, and you just repeat it all around the circle. And you can go back and embellish it. Oh, Devin. Oh, I know what Devin's going to do. I was going to ask, but I know what Devin's going to do. She's going to jelly plate on black tissue paper that I think she got from Dee Dee. I think that'll be really cool. I have to watch your replays because I'm off to play bridge. Let's play bridge. Now we're actually playing bridge, which is kind of nice. No more lessons. Real life bridge. Hi, Dana. And we deal out the cards and we bid and we play. And we try to keep score. I'm avoiding keeping score because that's complicated. Like everything else in bridge is complicated. The scores that go above the line and scores that go below the line. And then there's bonus scores. So I'm hoping that when I go out in public and play, there will always be somebody else that will be the scorekeeper. And it won't have to be me. All right. That's interesting. All right. Okay. Um. We have this other color here, uh, and I'm not even sure what it was, but whatever it is, I'm going to put it on the outer outer ring. I don't think it's part of the. It got. Well, I can. Doesn't we don't have to guess at it? Huh? No. The only other color we have left is this. We, is that the one we just put down? The mauve. We have the clay. All right, let's put it down. We'll spruce it up with other colors. It's too difficult. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, the lady next across the street for me. And, you know, 
she's older. She's probably older than I am. She must have had, my guess is she had two tables of bridge going on there yesterday. Oh, well, that's not that great, but it's okay. Again, we'll spruce it up. Because there were cars everywhere, parked on the lawns, and there were golf carts everywhere. So she must have had two tables of bridge going. I have the the chairs to a nice uh, card table, but I left the card table outside for years. And uh, now it's in, inhabited by lizards. So I'm afraid, not afraid, I don't think it's, so if I wanted to have a bridge party, so to speak, I would have to get a new card table. Because I guess you can't play bridge on a round table. I guess that's verboten. Oh, this is awful. Oh, my God. This looks like poop. Poopies. Thanks for the thumbs up, guys. I always appreciate the support. Comments. Even if it's one word. I, I guess that's a thing. Because they like to take subscribers away. I don't even bother anymore. I don't care. But I don't know about you folks, but I've noticed that the commercials have gotten so bad on YouTube. When you're watching somebody that's got a lot of subscribers. Oh, my gosh. They're just, and, you know, I, well, I keep on telling myself is that just get over it because every all every commercial basically provides income for that artist so just suck it up and just you know now someone said that and I don't know who the someone was that if you don't watch the whole commercial then the artist doesn't get credit or, you know, for that commercial. So I don't know whether that's true or not. And then there are some commercials that you can't skip. So they're, they're so short. Which I think, you know, those are okay if it's, a, you know, if it's pre-recorded. But if it's a live stream and the person is talking and then there's a commercial and they come back, then you've actually missed something because it doesn't stop because it, it's live. Now, this is really ugly. I don't know. I could have a bridge party outside. Yes, I don't think the bridge table will open after all these years. Honestly, Devin, I think it's a little, I mean, it's been over, un, over, under the oh, under the overhang but i don't know that it's really oh i'm missing platinum Ugh. oh my god how could i miss platinum okay i got some platinum here these are some other side i guess platinum's white gold right we'll, we'll use this I think this is platinum like. I don't know whether anybody would want to sit out in the broiling sun to play bridge. But that's another idea, though. Ooh, that is platinum. 
or silver. I guess platinum technically is gold, right? Hi, Stephanie. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, this is going to be... Interesting. Mandela. All right. Uh, see, the problem is I'm going to have to use other colors to... Finish this. What color was that? Well, that was this. All right, let's put this in here. Okay. And I guess I'll put the platinum in the middle. Ah. Uh. Now, I think I'm going to – I don't know whether I'm going to draw the, you know, the, the stuff. And Stephanie is – oh, cool, you're a quilter. That is awesome. It would have to be a very non-windy day. Uh, yeah, and it would be, I mean, it's broiling hot out there. You know, I don't have one of those things that come over the, so it would be brutally hot. Okay, I'm going to just kind of start drawing my things. Okay, three years. Wow. I'm going to go like so. And then like so. And like so. And then I think I could use a black pen and kind of do squiggly in between them and then fill in the other thing with some paint color Okay. Now, I can't. I don't want to use any of these colors, honestly. I just 
they're not I just like eh, horrible so I think I'm going to pick some other colors oh but I'm gonna wait for this to dry a little bit more and then we'll go to the next circle let's see and then you kind of like divide it in four and then you can kind of figure out your 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 areas and i'm going to use a ruler to kind of just to give me you know an idea very 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 faint kind of do a bullseye here okay i'm gonna do um i mean if i was really serious i'd get a protractor out and um count off the degrees but I'm not, I'm just gonna, I can't even see the line I drew. Did I draw a line? I must have, I can't even see. Oh, let me turn it this way. Okay, so I got a line here and here. And I wanna divide this and this in half. As best as I can. Asbestos. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. And now I'm going to do. No. I know you can't see this, so <clears throat> I think I probably should do it in ink. Yeah. Well, actually, it's time for me to go, and um, I'm going to make a prediction here. Just. You're probably not going to see this again because I don't know that there's any way I can I can save this. This is just beyond. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I mean, there's always black gesso. But I got plenty of watercolor paper. And uh, this is what I've put in here. Like so. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I've, that's what I've decided. That's kind of here and here. And then those are there. And I don't know. Oh, you could try to, t yeah, I could, yeah, the outer ring is really the one that, yeah, I could get rid of that. Yep. Oh, uh, you could try to tone down the outer ring with the platinum. That's not a bad idea because that's just, even though, look, it is actually one of the colors on the wheel. There it is kind of there, but it's just, all right, well, let's see what, how, where they, so this is the picture. This is the photograph that they pulled that palette from and there's the brown it, it it's the the tire this is interesting right so they take a photograph and then they pull the colors and there's the pink and the pink is kind of like the shadows on the seat and the red and uh 
Yeah, I don't even see the burgundy, but that's interesting where that tan came from. It's the tire. So, or make it darker. Yeah, that's another thought. Or get rid of it altogether. Well, thank you, ladies. I appreciate you being here and fumbling through this with me. And I will see you Sunday and, 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 um, uh, I will have the, a lot of embellishments made and ready to ready to put um, in the uh, journal. And uh, so I'll be working on that. So you all have a good day. And don't forget Devin's on um, at 2.30. And I haven't heard from Aunt Bex, so I guess you can go to her community page to see whether she's streaming or not. My guess is she's probably not. Um, it's interesting. When you lay this down, on top of this, it looks like it's a, a pretty good match, which is really weird. Okay, bye. Thanks for the thumbs up. Be good. If you can't be good, be careful and interesting. <laughs>